Good morning and welcome back for round two of our discussions of integral spiritual psychology um, as a way of getting back into the conversation uh, we thought we would revisit some stuff about Parseval to elaborate that a little further. First, Piers, I want to thank you for setting these conversations up and doing them together. And uh, it's really you know, a privilege to work with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So last time at the there, there's a couple of things that um, need clarification. So we, so last time was was really um, we were working with a kind of phenomenology of the field of integral spiritual psychology, that is trying to describe what the what the whole field is like, but not theoretically, but tries stay as close as possible uh, to an actual experience. And then this time we'll begin to go more into, in a deeper way, the uh, experiences per se. But um, so we located integral spiritual psychology within the depth psychology tradition primarily because it concerns soul and spirit. And, uh, and we, you know, we mentioned that Freud's psychoanalysis is backed by the myth of Oedipus. And Jung's psychology is backed by the mythic story of Eros and Psyche. And uh, integral spiritual psychology is backed by the saga of the Grail, the Parsifal story. And, and, and we, we mentioned that Parsifal, the word Parsifal, really means piercing through the heart as a kind of indication of it being the way of the heart. But there's a second meaning of Parsival, the word Parsival, you can hear it in the word Parsival, piercing through the veil, Parsival. So that, that it says it's the mythic, Grail is the mythic story of the unveiling of the uh, creating divine being of earth, who is in the Gnostic tradition, for example, called Sophia. That is, earth is veiled. We don't just with our usual consciousness and sensation and perception, we really don't experience it in the world as spiritual in any way. It's quite objective and maybe beautiful, but the beauty is over there. And uh, so it takes this inner path, this kind of inner awakening, which is a uh, like a lifting of the veil of Sophia, where then Earth does indeed begin to be seen in much more of her fullness as a sacred being. So that 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 that's already contained in the word Parsival. I was um, <clears throat> struck by a couple of things about Parsival. Parsival. Um, one was that. A, a desire was awoken in him by the sight of these knights. Yes, right. But then he's very much somebody who really doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> so Are you, you talking about him or me? <laughs> Us. <laughs> Us. <laughs> I hope we don't know what we're doing. 
yeah. So right there, it's really, I find this fascinating because there's something that's awoken and real and, and powerful, and yet there's no goal orientation or specificity about even what happens next. No, that's really perceptive <laughs> and characteristic of the whole of uh, this, this way uh, of the heart, because the purpose of the heart is to be within the heart. It, it's not to be within the heart in order to have something happen. And that makes it completely different than our usual consciousness where we, you know, I'll do this in order to get that or to learn this or that or to be able to do this or that. It, uh, uh, we're within the realm of feeling. It's about feeling. And, and feeling unfolds, but it doesn't, it doesn't lead to anything outside of itself. That's, that's, uh, that's going to take some getting used to. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, and that, that in, a, in, a, in, a, in a way, you know, uh, Parsifal starts out wanting to get something. I mean, he does, I want to be like those, uh, that light that, that overwhelmed me. And it, it's enough that it sets him on a path. So, but that, that takes the whole of the story to see how that unfolds, for example, it's really Gawain in the story who is the major figure of heart awakening. Mm. But we don't take them as separate in a mythic story. You know, you see them as all dimensions of each other. But Gawain has to learn to um, um, be present with emotion without reaction. And he makes the terrible mistake. <laughs> You know, he, he has to go into the, the Castle of Wonders and he walks into this room and there's a, you know, there's a lion on the bed and, and Gawain jumps on the bed and fights with the lion and has nearly killed himself, but he kills the lion. And the lion is this picturing of rampant emotion. And... Uh, Gwen nearly dies because he, he is supposed to tame the lion, not kill the lion. It's an important picture of, of, of uh, as we try to enter into the realm of heart and feeling, we, it's not a matter of killing emotion to do that. Mm. Like that would be a really big mistake. Maybe it would be helpful to talk more about, or to be not about, to, to try to sense, feel our way into the word unfolding. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It means the, the, both the world, but also the human being, which is a word, this word being is really interesting too. Being. So it's a verb. Mm -mm. It's not a thing, those being. Being is the inging of be. <laughs> it's, the, it's the doing of being. Yeah. It's the doing of, of who we are. See, that, that has that sense of not stepping outside, thinking that, well, if I know that, then I'll be more of who I am. We are who we are. <laughs> That's being. And so, uh, did, I, did I miss that I? Well, it's this, so the unfolding. Oh, the unfolding, yeah. I mean, it means that, that both that 
both nature and human being unfold. I mean, we're, 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 we're like a flower. You know, we're like a flower that there's a seed that grows and it you know, organically unfolds in such a manner that the, you know, the leaves are metamorphose into the, into the flower bud and the flower bud opens and then there's many leaves that's unfolding of nature. And as it unfolds, it is not only is more and more present, it's, it's more and more beautiful. And the, uh, the unfolding of being a heart being, a conscious heart being, is, it, it, that's the sense of unfolding. Uh, and then there's the dimension of being with the unfolding of everything. Yeah. That's, uh, that's right. Yeah, they <clears throat> say the, the, the getting, becoming aware of that is some, it's difficult because we human beings now live almost completely within civilization, not within the realm of the heart, which is more of what is, if that, if, if, the world lived in that sense, we would we would be living in a culture. That's the, the culture it really means the soul of the collective. But we, we live in civilization, meaning uh, you know, we think that we can make everything and do everything and are our own gods. <laughs> so so but so the, the process is abs that we're describing of unfolding within the heart is utterly natural, completely natural. You see, the children, the babies live that way. Even, even the tiniest baby, you know, and it's really actually a wonderful uh, practice, you know, to lay on the floor and start moving like a baby. Start moving like a baby. Because... They're 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 present within everything, you know. They're they're not just exercising their bodily being. They're touching everything. Mm -hmm. And then, and as the baby you know, gets a little older, play. But but they don't they don't think they're playing. <laughs> I mean, they have no notion of until what they're told and educated into, and given given civilizational toys. <laughs> but before that, they, you know, play is, is the, the, a child can be anything in an instant. It can be a truck or a tree or a bird or a deer that they're, because they're within, they're still within this wholeness. So it's, so in a way, or in a very true way, we're, we're trying to develop a kind of second innocence. It's not, 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 it can't be innocent the way children are innocent, but we can develop into a, a second kind of wisdom that's innocence. That's what we're, that's what this, this, this is concerns. Sitting here listening to you, <clears throat> the word um, popped into my mind, and I think it's related to this other meaning of grail you had mentioned to me, but the word popped in the mind of gestation. Yes. That's a, that's a good word. I was, you know, the experience, I think, everybody, I think it's a universal human experience. Uh, at a certain that this uh, this being a part of an aspect of everything that it doesn't go away but it condenses in us it begins to condense and as it condenses it becomes felt as an inner longing everybody has that it some gets to a point that that it's like 
it's not like the wholeness is disappearing. It's like it's condensing and becoming a strong feel, inner feeling that as it strengthens, it begins to be felt like, I want to offer something in the world. I want to be of help in the world. That means, let's see, we, 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 the, the grail questions are inherent. What ails thee? How can I help? Who does the grail serve? But that, that occurs within us. Of, of, uh, just like with the parcel, I, 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 there's a longing to be within the world in a helpful way. Very, very natural, but <laughs> but in particularly in the now at, at this time, it's immediately met by by civilization, meaning uh, it's not met by welcome. Here's the way to begin to continue to unfold within heartfulness in the in in helpful ways in the world. That isn't. You know, it's met with, uh, well, you know, you have to learn this, and you have to learn that, and you have to do this, and, you, and then you, and then you have to choose something to make a living. And uh, if you like it, that's wonderful. But really, finally, it doesn't matter if you like it; you have to do it. <laughs> yeah. So that that's kind of then the end of. Uh, heartfulness and soulness that is very natural. So that's a series of, um, for many, many, if not most people, that's sort of a series of, uh, I don't know if the right word, it's a, it's a defeating of the longing by, by postponing or, or, or distracting that you have to get the degree to get the job to eventually have the nonprofit that you can be of service. It's this all immediacy is lost. Immediacy is lost, and and longing becomes desire. Uh, you know, it, 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 it don't not exactly. Just describing the process, you don't feel so much the longing. The longing turns in on itself and becomes desire, and and it, and we become confused in desire. It's rather than I feel a longing to be of help. It's then I desire to do something. Uh, fascinating. So when we were just talking before we recorded, that another uh, way of understanding a word to help understand or unpack the grail is gradual. Gradual? Oh, gradual, yes. The, the word grail itself, which is spelled G-R-A-A-L, grail, mean that the word itself means gradual gradual because the the realm of the heart and the realm of feeling unfolds gradually we don't you know when we don't when, as we were saying earlier we don't know what we're doing and uh uh like like in thinking you know it's one thought after another, after another, and then suddenly you say, oh, I get it. I got it. Yeah. That doesn't happen in the realm of feeling. It's, 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 it never stops being gradual. Mm. Mm. So that that's, means also, of course, then it's a different quality of time that we're in within heart awareness. It's not uh, linear time. Yeah. So, 
so that's that's what yeah, thank you that's what happens to the to when longing turns in and becomes desire that's trying to speed up the longing into something that can be fulfilled in linear time yeah yeah and it always seems to have an implied when you're in that mode it has an implied ending yes an achievement attained then we then we can stop with all this effort yeah or then let's do the next thing right and then well once that happens we can start making attractive things to become the next thing that is desired mm -hmm. but you know in, in any way you know, the ways that we do experience the heart in 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 love uh when we're not just in the romantic love i don't mean that but but when we're in the field of love it also is is gradual i don't mean gradual in the sense that it develops little and becomes not necessarily that. it just means it unfolds gradually if i'm with someone i love when i say all right, will you please get to the point? <laughs> <You know? laughs> then that's a really, really, really indicator that I've left the heart. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you're about to have problems. <laughs> you're about to have problems. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, does this mean that? attention or even the word you used in the notebooks noticing mm -hmm. is not in the same civilization time mode yeah it is it's it's a difference between we are taught to pay attention you know that's called noticing too, but that means pay attention to that and pay attention to that and pay attention to that. But attention in, is central to heart awareness, but it's not paying attention, it's giving attention. I, I, I give my attention to you. Isn't that interesting way? I mean, rather, I'm not paying attention to you, I'm giving when I pay attention, it's like, well, I got a lot of it. You can have a little bit. <laughs> Here's 50 cents worth of my attention. But if you give attention, it means, it means my whole being goes over, goes into your being. And we're now together. Because, I mean, well, now we can be aware of being together because we were, we were anyway. But attention, you know, giving attention is the process of becoming aware that, that we are together. And it's felt. I mean, it's not known. It's felt. It's, it's, I can feel it now. It's just a remarkably uh, warm, but not fuzzy warm, particularly. Just, just you can feel it in the interior of the body. That's the way I can tell that we tell the difference between paying attention and giving attention. When I'm paying attention, I have to, I have to keep paying. <laughs> right, it's an act of strong will or something. That's right. That's right. Thank you. It's, it's, it's using attention to focus conceptual presence. Uh, That's different. So when attention is given, a change occurs in the whole.
Yeah. Uh, uh, again, the, the, then one of the concerns in a way, but not a mental concern, but once I'm, once there's paying attention, there is what follows from that is consistency, meaning that um, uh, you have to be able to follow with the feeling presence, the unfolding of the attentiveness that uh, tends the the, the realm of feeling. Is that? Yeah. Um, I want to give an example mm -hmm. of you, <laughs> but you talk about the tree that grows, the small tree that grows off of your back porch. Yeah. That was, that's, that, 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 first of all, is, is it, it that, you're saying at first that nature reveals to us the way of bodily heart attention. Nature is our teacher in it, in all that we're doing with this. So uh, you know, I have the right outside my door and on the deck. There's this beautiful tree that hap just happens that all its leaves are heart shaped. <laughs> And uh, and we we're now I would say I mean we're tremendously intimate friends, and uh, so I'm with her in, from the place of the heart, and we're together. And if I say something, how are how's everything? Or uh, she'll answer. I mean she she will answer. A, a leaf will move, or a, a, a slight breeze comes up. And it seems to be just around that tree, and then and, and the tree will move, and it's not some kind of um, um, emotional, you know, response or anything. It's like we are, it, our intimacy is not in the realm of back and forth. I say something to you, the tree responds back to me. We're in this field together. So what occurs, I think I'm right now I'm kind of talking about it, really I would have to slow down the phenomenal, phenomenologically describe what is happening within the field together. Yeah. No, cool. okay. Not given the tree your attention as many as we often do, and you had lived in that place for months or years. What's the difference? Well, uh, partly I don't know yet at all, because we'll be together a long time and have to watch it come be with its unfolding. But already it, it, it yeah, this is, uh, there's a bit of a challenge within it because it easily does become emotional. And I do feel that, I, 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 meaning, uh, it, I, I feel pain when something like when it's really, really hot for a really long time and her, and the leaves begin to fold and I actually hurt. <laughs> and uh, part of it means I'll, 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 I'll try to unfold with that and ask her if, if she wants water and I'll go, I'll go water the tree or, um, but it's 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 yeah. I guess what I want to get at is that field that we're in together in is a an imaginal field, not literal. 
if I begin to literalize it as, oh, you poor tree over there, let me go get you some water, I've left it, I've left the unfolding with it for emotion. And that they're so, so close because uh, it's just a note. I, I don't know that they need to be ex exactly, I think they are side by side, but but to notice the difference is really, really important. It's imaginal, meaning we're, when we're together, we're in image. Maybe that's saying a little bit about image, just the, the word image first. E, imago, e, I mage, means I live from within mm. image i live from within very helpful so it doesn't mean a picture doesn't mean you uh, uh it does mean but it, it means i live within the wholeness so that's 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 why that's why jung uh, in particular jung image was was central because his primary realm of research was dreams, dreaming. And dreaming occurs completely as image. So it's a complete inner world. And there's a lot to it about image means that, so then the dream is a, is a very helpful instructor. <laughs> when we dream, were the dreamer, the dreaming, and the dreamed simultaneously. Right? I, I'm not outside the dream, but you know, we, we do the dreaming, we're in the dreaming process, and we're in the dream as its whole. It's very helpful because I cannot, you know, when you're talking about the sort of tricky part of becoming emotional about the tree, this mm -hmm. could very easily be becoming sentimental about the tree. Yes. You would never do that with a dream. That's right. Well, uh, I don't know. No, 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 hopefully not. I was, I was thinking of Jim Hillman, my friend Jim Hillman, who takes up Jung and really, really works the sense of psyche as image. That's all of Hillman's work. Hillman's first writing, his, his, his first book, his dissertation was called Emotion. <laughs> so, so at first, for a long, long time, he spoke of the equivalence of emotion and image. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, uh, then, then gradually, we begin to see that that's... that's they're different, and just along the lines that you said that that uh, in working with a dream, so-called dream work, to stay with the image. That's that's his dictum. Hillman, stick to the image in working with a dream. Don't interpret it; just let it unfold. But part of that is to is to notice when we're emotional with the dream image. And to say, well, that that that's not part of the image, right? I'm importing that into that. Yeah, sentiment, or yeah. But the same way with the world within the heart, it's really that's yeah, you, you really have got the key to, and this has to do with the heart. I mean, what is the heart? <laughs> what in the world is the heart? Because, because of that word, and we see that we we use the word image, I mean, in the word heart, in two different ways. And heart is either a substance without metaphor, or it's a metaphor without substance. Meaning, if I say heart, well, are you talking about the, that organ in the body that pumps blood around the body? That's the heart. The heart, when, when I say heartfulness, is it the biological heart you're talking about? 
but that substance has no metaphor. But then you, and so I say, no, it's not exactly the, what I mean by the hard heartfulness. But then you say, oh, you mean uh, I love you. Uh, I give you my heart. And I have to say, no, it's not that either, because that's 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 hard as metaphor without substance. <laughs> so we do mean the in 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 this kind of psychology, we do mean the we do mean the embodied heart, but yeah, I think you in the notebooks it was something like it's it's substantial in I don't know if you said metaphorical, but yeah. it's participating in both realms at once. It's not either or. Yeah. Get into a little I hope it isn't too mental to do this. Oh yeah, so we are speaking of the physical heart. Mm-hmm. But we're, in, uh, but the physical heart is not the same as the corporeal heart. Mm-hmm. The corporeal. It's interesting that we can speak of the body as corporeal, but the the corporeal body is also not the physical body. It's it's meaning because it's. Uh, the corporeal body is the corpse, corpse body. <laughs> and the cor- corporeal heart is the corpse heart. That's, that's, uh, and, and, and when we live conceptually and try to pay attention to heart or body, we're, we're really talking about the corpse. The body as a corpse, even it's walking around, but it's basically, I mean, you are a, when I say physical, I mean, you are know, physically, but I really mean corporeally, because this is from Steiner, really, Rudolf, and Rudolf Steiner is very clear on this, that the, the, the realm of the physical is invisible. It's so hard to, what? <laughs> The realm of the physical is invisible. The corporeal is visible, but that's conceptual and it makes livingness into corpses. Yeah. And he says, our thinking follows along. We have corpse thinking. Yes. Dead concepts meet dead organs. Yes, that's right. That's what mainly we do. Thinking thoughts that have already been thought. Mm. So that I call it thoughting, not thinking. Thinking. <laughs> and, yeah. So th- this is this sense of uh, imaginal, too. That, that I, I mean, I, I would I, imaginal and physical would be pretty much the same. And you said some very interesting things about the relationship between silence Mm. and imaginal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good, that's good. When when we begin to take nature as our teacher and as the probably the first and best way to begin to open heart into heartfulness. Um, Gosh. Uh, I'm sorry, but my left, where you were saying, because I, I realized that we also have to do something to break through the habit of thinking. Even before meeting nature, I'll, I'll typically meet nature conceptually until I begin to feel it heartfully. And then, then the silence will be noticed. But uh, it's important to, to have some little practice that breaks the tie between thinking and breathing. 
because if, you know if you try to stop thinking you'll get really anxious really quick <laughs> yeah. if you just stop don't think you begin to get anxious because because thinking has become tied into our bodily breathing so the, uh, an easy way to begin to break that tie is if you take 10 deep breaths belly breaths and on the tenth one, you hold the breath, and you don't. You just you, and you hold it, and you press down inwardly, and you keep pressing, not breathing, just pressing down on the breath, and you'll suddenly feel like, uh, well, it's like it's it's as if the thoughts are being pushed out of the top of the head, <laughs> and there'll be a little moment of a kind of flash of light. And at any rate, when you really, really press down, you can't, you, you can't think. It's, it's not possible to think. And you'll notice that. And that's, that begins to break the habitual tie between thinking and, and little bodily uh, presence. Mm -hmm. Sorry to introduce that. But, but, it, but then as we more and more become intimate with nature I, 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 I noticed I remember exactly the moment this happened I, I was simply taking a long walk just then you know giving attention to trees and bushes and flowers and all of a sudden what unfolded was all of the natural world is every moment emerging from the vast uh, background of silence. I don't know, you'd have to experience it to, to suddenly be, but the artists, for example, really know that, like the painters particularly painting. You can't, if you try, if you try to paint a tree, <laughs> which I probably would, <laughs> if you paint a tree, it will never, never, never have the feeling of being a tree. It'll be a, that's an imitation painting of a tree. So a, a real painter will never paint a tree. They'll, they'll paint the, they call it negative space. You paint the space around the tree and then the tree will emerge from that negative space. But that's what nature is doing all the time. All the time, emerging from the vast, infinite qualities of silence, pure silence. And that nature is instructing us about how to be within the heart. That is, when we're within the heart, we're, you, you can also notice that the inner being is pervaded with silence. Silence doesn't mean the absence of noise. You know, uh, gradually, we can be in the middle of all kinds of outer noise and still be within silence. That, that's that's what nature teaches us about unfolding the way the heart lives in wholeness. In the imaginal mm -hmm. certainly not a consequence of that, but it is the imaginal that is presencing in the silence. That's right. So it's just saying, you know, a, a, an artist is a uh, master of presence with nature. That, that's one way of saying it. Even if they don't know that, it's not like, you know, and, and even if they paint portraits or any other act, they're still within that kind of 
presence of how nature lives. It's so evident <clears throat> with poetry sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's just pure magic. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, yeah. Well, that, uh, thank you. That, that's an interesting, see now that, that's a beautiful, beautiful unfolding uh, within the heart that is happening that because you unfolded the petal <laughs> that were within the, the petal of language within this unfolding of heartfulness and silence and language they're all they're all one and language then begins to be felt totally differently than words. The use of words conceptually to understand something. It's that, that the speaking also emerges from the silence. But then it's bodily felt, heartfelt, vibratorily felt within the body. So, so, so then being heartful unfolding within the silence, speaking within the silence, speaking is simultaneously a listening. Again, to contrast that with civilization, there is no listening in the present civilized, <laughs> civilized. Uh, so it's really kind of funny because we really see that we are, civilization is breaking down. And, and, and the first place that shows up is language that we, we don't listen and we don't speak within the silence. Everything is pronouncements. And as it begins to be pronouncements, we, you know, we pronounce at each other back and forth. That's, that's now the breakdown of civilization, which I actually I, has a hopefulness to it. Mm -hmm. Because there's suddenly a, an opening? There could be an opening if we can go through the death. Right now, the, the, again, in language, and to use that to be within pronouncing language all the time, separates us more and more. And separation always creates fear. And then fear creates more separation and it can be, you know, can get to a point of pure de destructiveness. That's kind of where we are in civilization. But yeah, if we again go back to, if we go back within the heart, within silence, within nature unfolding, within language as bodily gesturing, the other thing that is occurring and that we become more and more present with in the heart is in the natural world, there's, there's really no difference between or the difference between life and death is infinitesimal. There's not Death is over here and life is over here. And to be over here, I have to deny death or I have to fight against it or I have to, uh, in not being aware of it, it becomes this kind of emotional way of being with others. But nature does, 
life and death are like this. Because, I mean, actually nature is showing us that she never dies. She is divine. I mean, dying is awakening to into the spiritual world. Dying within the spiritual world is awakening into the physical world. There's no, nature lives like that. We don't, <laughs> we don't. Living within heart becomes also living within an intimate presence with death. No? It would seem that a tremendous challenge then in this time would be to serve the grail mm. in the midst of dying mm. when there's so much fear, but also a kind of, you can really feel this, a kind of urgency to want to get it over with. Yeah. And not be present to it in its immediacy and particularity and not not felt experience. Yeah. Well that's uh, gets us into <laughs> volume four. <laughs> yeah, what is happening in civilization and the way in the, in the way disastrous events are concocted in order to keep, in order to increase fear by giving attention to these, these terrible events you know, that keep us actually away from fully entering into the fullness of being together, being within heart, being within the world, being within the unfolding. Uh, because because fear can be manipulated and used in you know in all kinds of ways. That's the, that's I guess is the important is is to it's so interesting within heart as feeling. I mean, simply not present. The, the possibility of manipulation is simply not even present. Because, I mean, you'll never see, I don't know, you'll never see a, a horse trying to be a eagle. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, and, so the, the, the human being is the only being that can try to be what it is not. Oof. Right. Right. But to do that requires leaving the heart. Well, I think we did it again. We crammed quite a bit <laughs> in. Hopefully we were gradual. Oh, um. <laughs> can we say one little teeny thing? <laughs> because we got into this relation a little bit between heart and civilization. We probably shouldn't do that without mentioning ego. Mm. Ego. Uh, uh, because Heartfulness is uh, not opposed to ego at all, but it's 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 inherently not egotistical. Uh, because I mean, ego is the I call it the, e ego is the psychological support system that makes us believe that we can live within the world as if. We are completely independent of everything else. So, so you know, uh, so a civilization that no longer can live comfortably with a 
the embrace of culture, which would be the embrace of the heart, if civilization removes itself from heart, it also becomes more and more egotistical. Mm -hmm. so, so this civilization is also completely a me, me civilization. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just see that way they, those are, and, and, and there's no way to get rid of that by in civilization itself. Mm -hmm. It'll dissolve, egotism dissolves inherently with the awakening within heart. Because again, I mean, while nature displays herself all the time as beautiful, uh, a rose is a rose because it's beautiful, <laughs> mm -hmm. but it isn't trying to do that. Mm -hmm. It does it as in a belonging within the wholeness. It is, and it's, it's, and it's beauty, but it's not look at me how beautiful I am. It's, it's when we are within nature, all of nature displays as beauty. That uh, what is the beautiful human being like? Mm. Mm. We doubt it's a robot. <laughs> you know, that's all. So beauty is not pretty or prettiness or anything like that. It's so. Um, it's, it's it's very much like heartfulness. Um, felt important to say to. I mean, it's not opposed to ego, but just what happens if it separates. Well, it's very interesting that from within civilization, we're getting phrases now, like, or fantasies, I should say, like, break away civilization. Oh, right. Civilization could break away from the matrix of Earth. Yeah. That's what's happening. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly. I mean, that's why, you know, well, let's let's have SpaceX and whatever the blue blue dragon is it? Is it is really funny to want to why in the world would one want to leave? <laughs> right. Right. All right, sir. Well, thank you. This again. Thank you for this conversation and the way it unfolds is very, it really is. I'm, I'm, thank you. Thank you. Next time. So, yeah, next time. Take care.